know, Etsy is in the midst of a, a sort of turnaround. And I'm curious, let's start with what are you doing, what is the company doing to boost seller revenue and ultimately company revenue? The market opportunity we face is enormous. And in a sea of sameness where people are buying the same commoditized products from the same brands, the world needs Etsy more than ever. So we're very proud of the fact that we just had a $1 billion quarter. There was a $1 billion of gross merchandise sales on Etsy and a $1 billion of international sales through the course of 2017. And importantly, we grew faster in the fourth quarter than we've grown in recent quarters. The way we're doing that is by doing the basics better. We're doing a better job of search and discovery. We have 50 million unique items for sale at Etsy. So finding the right few to show in any given search query is important, and we're doing a better job. We're doing a better job on trust and reliability, so you know things like when can I expect this item to arrive and what's the return policies. Our marketing capabilities are getting better, and our seller tools are getting better, and it's showing up in the results. You've also been cutting costs. Where and how? So what we've been focused on is going faster, and in order to go faster, we need to have an organizational structure that is really clean accountability and very little bureaucracy. Unfortunately, that meant that in the third quarter of last year, we needed a leaner organizational structure and we did do a layoff. The goal of that layoff was for us to go faster and in fact, we announced that we've done more than 350 product enhancements just since May, with over 20% of them leading to demonstrably higher GMS. So we're going much faster and serving our community better. How are these changes coming off internally and externally? You know, I think the team went through some very hard times over the summer, and it's been difficult changes. But what we're seeing is that we're really serving our seller community better, and the team is feeling really great about that. You've got giants in the room, Amazon especially. How big a threat do you think Amazon is, especially with their handmade business? Etsy is really unique in that we have 50 million items that don't map to a catalog that are made by hand by 1.9 million sellers. You just can't find that anywhere else. Etsy's where you go when you want it to feel special. And the traditional rule of retail is you've got price, you've got convenience, and you've got selection. And the old saw is you can do only two. Amazon and other mass retailers do all three well. But if you think about our space, the way that they give you better pricing is by buying 10,000 units of something and then passing along the savings. Well, if you can buy 1,000 of anything, it doesn't belong on Etsy. The way they do a good job of convenience is by warehousing everything in advance and then shipping it to you next day. Many items on Etsy are made by hand and made to order. They're customized for you, and as a result, they're not naturally warehoused. And in terms of selection, again, we have 50 million items by over 1.9 million sellers. No one else comes close. Etsy's activist shareholders had raised the possibility of the company selling itself. Is that on the table? You know, we feel great about the market opportunity we have. And when I joined as CEO in May, I said, I really believe that we have a big market opportunity and we can grow more quickly. And you're seeing evidence of that today. So we feel great about the trajectory that we're on. But could Amazon be an acquirer? Could you thrive better or within a larger company or even like an offline crafts store, for example? I think we're thriving really well today. And I think that the results we posted demonstrate that we're really unlocking a lot of growth and a lot of value, which is great for our sellers and our buyers and all of our stakeholders. You've given up your B Corp designation, which is you know, part of the way you demonstrated your public commitment to being a socially responsible business. But what does that say about the possibility of running a socially conscious business? You know, the great thing about Etsy is that our day job is socially responsible. We have 1.9 million sellers, 86% of them are women, and they count on us to wake up every single day and deliver on their behalf. We are a socially responsible, socially conscious organization. What's changed is our focus and our execution. When you're socially responsible, you need to hold yourself to a higher bar in terms of focus and execution, and we are. Speaking of that, Etsy has taken the lead in, in being at least outspoken about diversity within your corporate culture. You know, how is that effort going and what are you doing to continue to build diverse teams and retain um, diverse candidates? It's super important for us. 86% of our sellers are women and our buyers are disproportionately female as well. So having a diverse culture that really reflects the diversity of our market 
is very important. We also get better innovation and better ideas when we get people coming from many different backgrounds, all forms of diversity we embrace. So we're making progress, but there's more room to go. One thing that we've implemented at Etsy that we think is very important is the Mansfield Rule, where we make sure that we have a good proportion of people from underrepresented backgrounds come and be part of the interview process so that we end up with uh, as diverse a team as we can get. So does that slow the hiring process down? And you know, if so, why do you think it's worth it? Sometimes it does. And the willingness to keep a rec open to make sure that we see a diverse population of candidates is important because what it results in is a more diverse team, which drives more innovation and better empathy and insight for all of our stakeholders and customers.